Hi guys, welcome back to yet another podcast episode with me, G. Are we impressed with how consistent I'm being? Because I am. I didn't think that I was going to be as consistent as I am. But what I've decided to do is just pre-record a couple of podcasts so that I look consistent, even though I'm, I don't think I am being consistent. But anyway, today's topic is looking back at my fears or phobias that I had or still have. I thought it would be kind of cool. I was in the car with my mum and really I was just thinking about myself as a child and all the things I used to be scared of. And I was one, like, I don't want to call myself a weird child, but the fears that I had, they just, they're just not your average fears. So I want to jump straight into this episode. My first fear and the fear that I still have is of the dark. I used to be really embarrassed about telling people that I was scared of the dark. And then a couple of years ago, I was like, why do I find it so embarrassing? I think it must have been one or two years ago. I'm like, being scared of the dark is so normal. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, Obviously, some fears happen or they begin after something in your life has taken place. For example, you might be scared of water or drowning, and that could be because maybe you know someone or you've seen someone or you've nearly experienced uh, drowning. So for me, I think I had a similar experience with the dark and that's why I am scared of it. But regardless of what happened to me as a child, I feel like I would have been scared of the dark either way, uh, just because my overthinkingness, if that's even a word, takes over my mind when it's dark. Um, And I know that there are some people who can't even sleep in the dark. They have to have a light on. My fear of the dark isn't that bad, thank God. I can't sleep with any lights on. But I can't walk around when it's dark. You can expect me to always turn the lights on in my house if I have to move around in the dark at night or whenever, yeah. The second fear is actually pretty weird. And I forgot I had this phobia because I guess it became so normal to me. Now, you're probably going to be like, gee, what the hell are you? Like, what is this fear? Like, this is so stupid. But I promise you, I used to be terrified. And that was of toilet flushes. And whenever I've told someone this, they always look at me weird. But I'm not afraid of the actual flush like the thing that you use to flush. I'm scared of the loudness of it. And I'm saying I'm scared uh, in the present tense, even though I'm I'm not currently scared of them, it's whatever. But as a child, I was terrified of them. And I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this in a YouTube video before or in a podcast episode. I know that I've mentioned this a couple of times, but toilet flushes, they're just so unnecessarily loud and I, I don't get it. Why are they so noisy? I can under... Oh my god, guys. Aeroplane... Aeroplane toilets. I just... No. It's just a big fat no. And I have the audacity to always use the aeroplane toilets. Um, Because I I drink a lot of water throughout the day. So obviously when I'm on a flight, I'm still drinking a lot of water and stuff. So I'm always coming and going from the bathroom. But aeroplane toilets... I understand that there's no water in the bowl in the um, toilet in the aeroplane, okay? Because that would be really stupid if there was. So the this sounds so disgusting, but the suction of the flush has to be pretty strong to take in whatever is in the toilet. But they're so loud. They're too loud. I You have to put the lid... If you've never been in an aeroplane or if you've never been in the aeroplane toilet, first of all, Opening the door to get in and opening the door to get out of the toilet is confusing in itself. I know that I fight with the aeroplane toilet door every single time that I go in. And when you are coming to flush, there's like a little note on the, I think it's on the inside of the toilet lid. And it's like you need to put the seat, the lid down and then flush. But it's still so loud that I have to put the lid down, flush, and then cover my ears. But it's so loud that I can hear it through, like, through covering my ears. And if I go back to when I was a child, I used to have to... um, So I'd use the toilet, and then I'd wash my hands, and then I'd unlock the bathroom door, open the door, flush the toilet, and quickly run out of the bathroom. 
Now imagine that happening on a toilet on the on an airplane. Because I sit there fighting with the door while it's flushing and it's like I can't get out. I, I don't know what it is about these airplane toilet doors. I can't get out of them once I'm inside. And I sit there fighting with the door, trying my best to get out before the flush comes on, but it's always too late. Um, but that was another fear that I, that I had. Um, and I still have every now and then. Um, but it's a fear that I've definitely, like, I grew out of eventually, maybe up until a couple of years ago. But that's completely besides the point. Um, another fear that I actually currently have is sneezes um, and coughing. I don't know if I've ever told anyone this. I know some people, so like some of my friends, I know my family know this, but when I was in year four, I caught swine flu and I, I'm i pretty sure it was because there was a child near me who sneezed either on me or around me. Either way, they were really close to me when they did it and I caught swine flu and it was it was really, really awful. And sneezing never bothered me up until I thought about when I had swine flu and I thought about it a couple of years ago and I was like, hold on a minute. It's because of, and then I like overthought about it and I just find sneezing so disgusting. Um, even when I sneeze myself, I have to kind of like stop breathing a little bit, even though it's my own germs. But I, it's just, I know it's such a weird phobia, but when I was on my, like I'd be on my way to college or something and someone would sneeze on the lower deck of the bus or whatever. And if I hear it, I get so uncomfortable. I stop breathing. I have to cover my mouth and nose. And in some situations I get off the bus and I change buses because it bothers me so much. And I know that's really, really bad and it shouldn't be the case, but it is. Um, and to be fair, I think it's, that's like quite a reasonable fear. Quite, it's quite understandable, especially in the given circumstances of having, you know, COVID, coronavirus. It's, it's just disgusting to me. And I feel bad because whenever someone sneezes, even if they're in my family, I have to get up and leave the room. But don't even get me started on the people who don't cover their mouth and nose. Because those are the worst kinds. Like, oh God, I'm cringing just like talking about it. But when they, um, oh God, when they sneeze, op it's like, what are you doing? I get that you're sneezing and it probably feels good for you to get it out of your system, but you don't need to share the germs. It does, it bothers me a lot. And then the, the type of, if it's like a really wet sneeze, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but if it's a really wet sneeze, I can't. I can't do it. I'm cringing. Like, I, oh. Sneezing is a fear which I think is a valid fear to have. I mean, all fears are valid anyway, but I feel like if someone was to say to me, what is your fear? And I said sneezing, they'd, ha they'd have to understand. Um, because it is, it, I don't know. I, the thing is coughing, coughing doesn't bother me. I mean, as long as you're coughing like into your hands or into a tissue or into your sleeve, coughing doesn't really bother me, but it's the sneezing that does. And, ugh, oh my God, sorry. I'm just cringing just talking about it, but sneezing is definitely something that I hate. And um, actually, whenever I'm out in public or like, you know, with my family out in public and someone sneezes, my family look at me to see my reaction and I instantly just have to, cover my mouth and nose them. Um, but conveniently, because of COVID, we have masks, which I just always wear. I keep it on every time I gotta go out, no matter where I am. Even if I'm like really hot, I I don't know how to explain it, but I kind of like pinch my mask from the bottom and just let a little bit of air in when I get too hot. But otherwise my mask doesn't come off my face until I get back into my house. And don't get me wrong, I, I sneeze because I am a human. But if I've got my mask on, I still cover like my mouth and nose and sneeze into my mask. Because I don't want to spread my germs. Um, likewise, I don't want to get anyone else's. But so, there are certain people who just sneeze openly. And I'm like, I don't know if, I don't know how they feel comfortable with openly sneeze. Like just, just let it all out like all over the place. It's not something I like. And if you ever see me in public and someone sneezes, I will either walk in the other direction. You will see that it will, it will be so obvious on my face that something's not right.
but it will be very, very obvious. Um, let's see. Another fear that I have, I'm going to talk about two fears. And these are pretty valid, understandable fears, and I feel like a lot of people have them. The first one is of bees and wasps. You, you don't really need an explanation for that, but I don't even know where this fear came from because I was never afraid of them up until maybe one or two years ago and now. I just find them terrifying now, but I don't know where the fears come from. I never used to be afraid of them. I mean, alhamdulillah, I've never been stung by any, but... I just find them terrifying now and I don't know why. I used to just, you know, let them do their thing. I never used to bother them. I was like, you know, whatever. But now I, I, I hate them. I can't stay in a room if I know there's a bee or a wasp in, in it. I, I, honestly, I have no idea where the fear came from or where it started. I know that I used to, maybe not waft them, but I did used to panic a little bit and then my parents would like waft them away. But I've changed. I'm no longer a wafter or a stay calmer. I'm now a panicker and I run away. And obviously that's the worst thing to do. But I think loads of people are scared of bees and wasps. And it's just one of my fears. Another fear that I have is of spiders, um, arachnophobia. If I'm being honest, it's not as bad as it used to be. I was absolutely terrified of spiders to the point where I would not go into a room with a spider in it. And that is kind of the like, same case, I guess. It's kind of the same thing as now, but it's a lot better. I can go into a room with a spider in it as long as I can see where the spider is and as long as it, you know, as long as I, um, it doesn't lose my, um, line of sight. The minute I spot a spider, you'll see that I am constantly eyeing it up and down and I'm constantly keeping an eye on where it's going. But if I see that it's disappeared, that's when my fear kicks into full max and I have to leave the room because I'm like, where the hell is the spider? But this arachnophobia is definitely something that I've always had since I was a little girl. Um, but it has it has gotten better. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older, so they're less scary. I don't know. But even the tiniest spiders used to really scare me and I'd have to leave the room and I wouldn't go into the room until I knew it was dead or gone or whatever. But now I'm okay. Like if there's a spider in my room, like I said, as long as it's not near me in my bed or where I am, I'm fine. And as long as I can see it, the minute it disappears is where it becomes a problem. But I feel like that's with a lot of people. Um, I had another fear in my, in my head. Um, I would say f I'm scared of snakes, but I've never been in a place where there are sn I mean, I've been at school um, and sixth form and stuff, but maybe if I saw a snake, then I'd know for sure if I was scared of snakes or not but the only snakes that I've come in contact with are the ones that were at my old school you know my my old friends so I can't say for certain if I'm scared of the animals um let's see let's see let's see I guess I have social phobias because of my anxiety I'm not afraid of being judged by other people but what I am afraid I, it's just I don't know what other people are like and obviously I've been bullied in the past and everything um, but I'm a much stronger person now but it's still like I feel like the common fears that women have like walking alone at night or even during the day being harassed like I am a little bit scared of men I can't lie to you the amount of harassment that I face when I go out is unbelievable and I I just don't leave my house anymore because I'm like I don't have to deal with it but yeah, I guess you could put men on the list. I'm not really scared scared of men, but only the ones who, you know, la like ladies will know what I'm talking about. But we have this, I feel like we're extra paranoid when we go out just because of everything that we know could happen to us. Um, and I'm not saying that this doesn't happen to men as well, but I'm a woman. So that's the perspective that I'm going to be talking about. Um, yeah, that's the perspective that I'll be speaking from, I mean. 
So I am a little bit scared of men in the sense that they could literally do any, like I'm, I'm scared of when they come up to you, when they approach you and then you have to reject them. Like I'm scared of that reaction because you don't know, which is why a lot of people, when they see, I've seen so many videos on TikTok of ladies recording a man who's, you know, staring at them or making them feel uncomfortable. And then I go to the comments and it's all these men that are like, yeah, maybe he's staring at you because you're recording him. But it's like, what like it doesn't make sense to me like of course the men are going to be sticking up for other men but it doesn't make sense to me that men think it's okay i know that men who can't call think that they're complimenting us but it does scare me so i feel like men should be on that list but it will be on a scale of one to ten of how scared i am where ten is being really scared of men i'm probably like a two or three uh, it's not a major fear but um, it definitely increases if I'm out at night coming back from uni or wherever I am and there's a man walking behind me or there's or I see a man somewhere around me uh, that fear does definitely does increase a lot so there's one here I'm looking at a website to see if I've got any of these fears so there's one called panphobia and the definition is this generalized fear describes the condition of fearing everything and is often described as constantly dreading some vague and persistent unknown evil. Now, I believe in like spirits and jinns and stuff. And I also believe in angels and you know, whatever. I watched a really, really scary documentary. It had life footage, it was Turkish, and it was about these people who get possessed. And there was this one girl who got possessed by the most evil, strongest jinn. And it terrified me. I can't lie, I am still Quite really scared but it's not a fear that I ex like I um, can I say experience a lot just because I've strengthened my relationship with God and I know that if you're an atheist or agnostic I know that you probably won't understand what I'm trying to say but if you do believe in God I know that you probably will know what I mean when you strengthen your relationship with God you feel a lot more confident and I guess you feel braver because you know that God's always got your back so I've since that documentary I found myself remembering God a lot more than I used to and just kind of always saying that I'm thankful for everything that I have and thanking God and just remembering God and that way these evil things kind of stay away from me because they know my relationship with God is strong um, but it's definitely a fear that does cut especially at night if you're walking around your house at night you might hear a noise, you might think you've seen something. My sister and my dad have like a sixth sense. And I know that on many occasions, oh, sorry, that alarm sound triggered me a little bit. Um, but yeah, my sister on many occasions has, I've had her come running up the stairs at night after filling up her bottle of water. And she goes, sorry, I just, I thought I saw something, I, you know, and at first I was like, oh, maybe it's just your imagination. But then she described it and I was like, oh, that sounds like a little bit more than your imagination. So I don't know, I guess one day, maybe next week, I don't know, I'll sit down with my sister and do a podcast about her experiences with this kind of stuff. Um, my granddad has experienced a lot. In fact, I know that he's woken up in the middle of the night and he's seen actual like spirits around him and you know he found it scary or whatever but um yeah so that is a fear that comes and goes sometimes let's have a look um i know that when i was in like year three year four when you know when you used to go swimming with your school not with your school with your year group whenever i'd be in the swimming pool i would hate putting my head under the water in case I saw a shark. And I know that's a fear that a lot of kids have. I'm not really that scared anymore because ever since I've traveled and I used to go like, I used to go snorkeling a lot. I did use because I was in like the sea, you know, and this was in, it was in a tropical island that I used to go. So I was scared, but then I was like, um, sharks can't really, they're not going to come this far up because they're going to get beached. And that's like, you know, risking their life. But there have been times where I did go snorkeling or something 
And obviously when you're in the sea, you kind of drift off without realizing because of the current and everything. And I'd like look up and I'd constantly make sure that I am near enough to get to land if I needed to get there. But I did watch um, Open Waters, which is a documentary that you should watch if you are a diver or just interested in documentaries, really, or, you know, sea life and water. It was a little bit scary, but at the same time, these divers made so many mistakes, which is why they drifted off and got lost from the boat that, you know, they were using for the diving and stuff. There was a group of divers and, you know, people. it was like a resort kind of program thing. And they were pretty uh, arrogant. Yeah, arrogant actually is the word I need. And they kind of just didn't look out for time. They didn't look out where the boat was. They weren't paying attention. But at the same time, the boat didn't make sure properly that everyone was on board. So it was both of their faults, but I think it's more the divers themselves um, who are to blame because they weren't paying attention. And it was something that they did a lot, but it's definitely a documentary which you should check out. It did instill a little bit of fear in me, but I'm so anxious. I've said this before and I think I tweeted it. My anxiety stops me from doing a lot of stuff, but it's also saved me from a lot of dangerous situations. And I know that if I was a diver, I would constantly be looking at where the boat is. I'd constantly be looking up. I'd be constantly checking the time and my oxygen because... Anyone with anxiety can tell you that we're such overthinkers that I'd be worried that the boat would leave without me. Um, so that is a fear, I guess, of open water, but I'm not really, I'm not really that scared. But yeah, sharks and stuff um, do scare me a little bit. I, you know, the fear of um, holes, I think it's called trypophobia. I could be wrong. So don't take my word for that name. But... I don't, I don't think I have a fear of like little holes and stuff. They do make me feel a bit weird because I'm like, you know, it's a bit unsettling. But I have, you know, when you maybe you might heat some food up in the microwave and then when you take it out, it's got these little holes in it. They like make me feel really uncomfortable, but I wouldn't consider myself to be scared or have a fear of them. But they are something that like it does definitely make me uncomfortable. But I am interested to know what your fears are and everything. So you can always DM me what your fears are, whether they're weird or not. And I'd be really interested to know. You can DM me at my Instagram, Jahan at, uh, jahan.m, J-E-E-H-A-N for November, dot M for mother. Um, I always have to do that because then people get mixed up. Um, so you can DM me on my Instagram. Or you can even comment if you can leave a comment on whatever you're streaming on. And tell me what your fear is, because I am really interested to know. I do want to end this podcast episode here, because I feel like it's dragging on a bit too long. But I did want to share my phobias, because I feel like some of them are weird, some of them you can laugh at, and some of them are completely normal. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for listening. Have an incredible morning, night, evening, afternoon, or day, wherever you are in the world. And I hope you guys will tune in next time my next podcast episode have a great day guys bye